In our last batch of videos, we looked at CVP analysis, and we're going to continue that theme in this video. We're going to look at multi-product CVP. So something you're going to notice in the last problem that we worked through was that the company only sold one product. So when we calculate the break-even point, we kind of go, okay, well, we, if we sell this many of this product, that's how much it takes to break even, and we can do some analysis. But it gets a little more complicated when the company sells more than one type of product, this CVP analysis stuff. So that's what we're going to look at in this problem. You can see the top of the problem. It says four eight marks eight minutes. That means this is an old exam question, but I thought I'd walk you through it. And, uh, a pretty simple uh, version of a multi-product CVP. And that's, that's what I would call this topic, multi-product CVP, multi-product cost, volume, profit analysis, multi-product break-even analysis. So let's look at the problem and see how we do. Palace Pop produces and sells vending machines for outdoor events. The company's three models are basic, premium, and super vend. Details about them are below. And so you can see the units sold of basic, premium, and super vend, the selling price, the variable cost, and the company's fixed cost. Now, I could immediately do an income statement for this company, right? I could say, okay, I sold 420 units of the basic, the basic cost me 600, or I sell it for 600 bucks and the variable cost of that, so I could figure out how much money each of those products is making in contribution, deduct the fixed cost, and figure out how much money my company's making. But that's not what the question's asked. Uh, the first step of a multi-product CVP is what's asked for in step A. Step A says, determine the sales mix of the three products. So to do a sales mix is actually really easy, and I've seen students overcomplicate this. We're going to figure out the mix of units sold. So we sold, actually let me put the names on screen, of the basic, we sold 420, of the premium, 175, and of the super vend, we sold 105, and the total then is 700 and that's all given information well if i want a sales mix i just want to restate this in a, as a percentage so that's the units the mix is pretty easy here i'm going to say okay well if 700 is all the units i sold that's 100 percent what are the other ones as a percentage well I, i've got my calculator here for a reason and let's figure that out so 420 of my 700 units were basic so 420 divided by 700 means that 0.6 or 60% of the units I sold were basic. So that means if a customer comes in and walks out and I don't know what they bought, there's a 60% chance they bought a basic, you know, if, if we were having to guess. So basic is the majority of my business. Let's look at what uh, premium comes in at. So it's 175 divided by 700, 25%. And just by process of elimination, I know that uh, Superven has to be 15, because 60 and 25 is 85. I know it's got a total to 100, so I know I'm missing 15%. But let me prove that. 105 divided by 700, 105 is how many units of the Superven I sold. Out of 700 total means, yeah, indeed, 0.15 or 15%. So I've computed my sales mix. And that's part A of the question. Even if you get one of these problems, and they might not tell you, do the sales mix first. I'm such a nice guy, right? I gave this as a midterm exam. I could have just said, hey, give me the break-even point, and not given them the hint that they need to do the sales mix first. And that could very well be the case in the question you have to tackle. But the first step in a multi-product CVP is figuring out the sales mix, and we've done it. 60, 25, and 15% is our sales mix. Determine the weighted average contribution margin. All right, well, that's a pretty easy step as well. And so what I need to figure out is my contribution margin of basic premium and super vent. So let's figure that out. And we all remember sales minus variable expenses equals contribution margin. So let's quickly do that for this product. 600 is our selling price for the basic, 850 for the premium, and 1325 for Supervent. Our variable costs are 425, 650, and 825. And so I can figure out my contribution margin per unit of each of those products by just taking the price minus the uh, variable expenses.
600 minus 425 means our basic gives us a contribution of 175. Not surprisingly, we mark up the premium a little bit more. We make 200, and on super vans, we make $500. So that's our most <coughs> lucrative item on a per unit basis. Okay, so those are our markups or our contribution margin. Again, 175 for the basic. 200 for the premium and 500 for the super vent. Now the question says, what's the weighted average contribution margin? And all we need to do here is to say, okay, assuming this constant sales mix, assuming that um, we sell 60%, 25%, and 15% respectively, what's our average contribution margin? And so again, if I wanted to do a basic average, I would just add these three, 175, 200, and 500. I would add them together and divide by three. That's an average. But a weighted average says, no, no, no. The basic should carry more weight because I sell more of it. So I'm going to multiply the basics by its sales mix. I'm going to say, okay, 175 times 60%, 200 times 25%, and 500 times 15%. And let's compute those uh, numbers and we'll go from there. So move my calculator over. 175 times 0 0.6 is 105. 200 times 25%, 200 times 0.25 is 50. And 500 times 15%, 75, but I'll just confirm that. Yes, indeed, it is 75. So these numbers actually on their own don't mean anything. They do mean something in total. 105 plus 50 plus 75. 105 plus uh, 50 is 155 plus 75 is 230. You know what? I've done these enough times to know I better not do the math in my head. Let me just double check. 105 plus 50 plus 75. Yeah, it is 230. This is the number that was asked for in part two. This is called the weighted average contribution margin. Now, what this tells us is if a customer walks in and buys one product, on average, we're making $230 off of that customer. They're contributing $230 towards our bottom line, on average. Again, even though the um, basic only makes us 175, and the premium only makes us 200 because the the super van makes us 500. On average, we're making 230 on each customer. Again, if you were to add up these three numbers and divide by three, you would not get the correct answer. This is a weighted average contribution margin. So we've answered part one. We've done the sales mix. That was part A. Part B. We've done that as well. The weighted average contribution margin was 230 bucks. Now part C is actually easy. How many units of each model must the company produce in order to break even? Well, let's start by figuring out our break even point in units. Now you'll remember from our previous string of videos, the formula for break even units is fixed expenses divided by CM per unit. Now I've seen students butcher a problem here because they go, okay, fixed expenses, we know that number is uh, 138. And they go CM per unit. Well, we computed that as 175, 200, 500. Well, that's you know that's messing with this product mix thing. And, and we want to use our average contribution margin per unit. We went through the steps to figure out our weighted average contribution margin per unit was 230. Let's use that number. So again, our fixed expenses, 138. Our weighted average contribution margin. $230 per unit. That's our normal contribution margin per unit. Our average contribution margin per unit, 138 divided by $230. 230 uh, contribution margin per unit means we need to sell 600 units in order to break even. So that's great to know. We need to sell 600 units in order to break even, assuming a constant sales mix, assuming our sales mix is, is relatively the same. So if I need to sell 600 units, how many of each unit do I need to sell? Well, I need to sell 600 units of basic premium, oops, BB, that was supposed to be a P, basic, premium, and super vend all combined. But I know the sales mix is 60%, 
and 15%. So I'm just going to say, okay, well, 60% of 600 means I need to sell 360 basic units. 25% of 600 means I need to sell, hmm, math in my head is, in, is failing me. I think it's 150, but let me just confirm. Yeah, it's 150. And finally, I need to sell 15% of 600 and that is 90. So to answer my last question, in order to break even, I need to sell how many units of each model must the company produce in order to break even? Well, I need to sell 600 units in total, but those break down this way. 360 of the basic, 150 of the premium, and 90 of the super vent. And if you don't believe me, all you have to do is plug it back in here and say, okay, if I sold 150 of basic, 150 times 4, uh, rather, let me go back down. I think I had the wrong number. 360 of basic, pardon me. 360 of basic, I would go 360 times 600, 360 times 425, and I would get totals there. Uh, 150 of premium and, and whatever it was of super van. If you multiplied that all through and prepared an income statement, you would see net income at that break even point would be, of course, zero. If you take the price minus the variable cost, and at the end of the day, subtract out the fixed costs as well, you would see the profit was zero. So again, multi-product CVP. Step one, get the sales mix. Step two, figure out that weighted average contribution margin. And that was part B of this question. Step three, break it down. So you, you calculate your break-even point, you get a total number of units, then you gotta say, okay, assuming the same sales mix at the start, this is how those units would be distributed. 360 for basic, 150 for premium, and 90 for super vent in this case. That's it for this video. Stay tuned for the next one.